acompanhou o blog e viu a, a matéria sobre o, a volta ao mundo no Pilatos PC-12 que a Amélia Rose Earhart fez. E esse aqui é o, é o avião que ela fez o, a travessia. Por acaso ela está aqui e a gente vai tentar falar com ela exclusivo para aviões e músicas. Ó, motor PT-6. GoPro. E esse é exatamente o avião que ela fez a, a travessia. A gente vê aqui o tanque extra de combustível né, para algumas etapas. Bagagem. O cockpit do avião. Ali atrás um pouco de bagagem. já com LED e aqui é a história e os lugares por onde ela passou uma bagageira de carga E esse é o PC-12 real. Que legal, né? De poder estar tá aqui e ver o um avião que vai entrar para a história. Para a eternidade. I was talking to her. You, uh, how to pronounce your name? Because in Portuguese, it's Amelia. Okay. And you are Amelia, mm -hmm. right? But now you belong to the world. I mean, you made history crossing the world and uh, you hear your name pronounced in several ways <laughs> yeah exactly I, i wasn't expecting to interview you but i wrote about you on my blog in Thank brazil because people didn't know you were doing uh, the crossing mm -hmm. which amelia tr uh, amelia tried mm -hmm. to do a long time ago mm -hmm. so um i have some questions i am an airplane mechanic and i am i am more interested in uh, how did you plan the trip with maintenance okay. in your head because you have some time on the airframe right. to do some checks and yep. how did you solve those? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, so when I first saw the aircraft, it was in Switzerland and I picked it up for a ferry flight uh, in Stans and it had three hours on the engine. Oh, so it was just brand after new. test flights, brand, brand new. So test flights were done in Switzerland and we picked it up, ferried it back across Prestwick, Scotland, um, through Reykjavik, Iceland, mm -hmm. Callowit, Canada, Thunder Bay and Denver. Uh -huh. So then in Denver, it was under basically Pilatus' care. And right before the trip, we were able to do our 150 hour inspection. And we had just passed, uh, or we're on the approach to 150 hours. That way we knew we were safe for the whole mission. And the total time on the aircraft that we added was 108.6 hours. Oh, so you didn't have any problem during your trip, maintenance wise? No, not one single squawk the entire time, which wow, is pretty that's miraculous. And uh, our Pratt Whitney team was very supportive of the whole flight and what they pledged to do was provide engine maintenance service uh, if it needed to happen uh -huh. anywhere around the world. So their local teams were on standby as we made our way through. On top of that, uh, they also had a PT-6 engine on standby if something were to go wrong catastrophically. Uh -huh. But of course we knew we wouldn't need it. Uh, uh -huh. But they really were fantastic in terms of their support. Uh, Pilatus teams across the globe were also supportive if anything were to go wrong. Yeah, that was a nice choice of uh, airframe and power plant <laughs> because PT-6 are, you know, we know about the uh, reliability of right. the engines. And, uh, so I have some another questions sure. from the guys in Brazil. Uh -huh. um, how long did it, did it take for you to plan the trip? So, to you know, as, as a mechanic and as someone who is uh, well-versed in aircraft, there is a lot that goes into international flying. Yeah. From overflight permits to visas, um, you know, putting in the extra fuel tank. We added a 200 gallon ox tank in the cabin. So that had to be manufactured, it had to be installed, it had to be certified. Yeah. And those certifications take a long time. Mm -hmm. So 
I gave myself a year and a half to plan, and that was from the point of developing all the relationships with uh, the different sponsors that are on board, along with, uh, you know, getting the HF radio, getting the, the fuel tank, every bit of the last avionics put on board. Um, not only that, we also had to build the media side of the trip because we wanted to make sure that the whole world saw. Yeah. So we had, you know, several interviews along the way that really documented the process from start to finish. Oh, that's good. And uh, um, I, I guess because English is not the native language, that, you know, all right. over the world. Did you have any problems with uh, speaking with the control centers? Uh, their English was okay, or <laughs> you had you had some problems with? No, uh, you know, we really. I I thought we would have a lot of problems. I was nervous about that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, being an English speaker, I'm lucky that uh -huh. English is the international language of aviation. Uh -huh. But for everybody else, I know that it's not first. But what I found was that around the entire world, the communication was probably some of the easiest I've ever had. Wow. And I felt that the controllers, especially on departure and arrival and center frequencies, the, the controllers were speaking so slowly and so clearly, uh -huh. that I could almost understand them better than what I fly in the US. Wow. <laughs> and I found myself only, pro I probably only had to ask them to repeat maybe five times around the whole world. And we talked to hundreds of controllers and one of the other best things that happened was we were flying over the Indian Ocean and the controller, when I felt like we were literally on the other side of the world, the controller got on and said, good luck, Amelia and Shane, we think this is great. Wow. And that really sealed it up for me. I said, this is a community. You know, this is more than just a, a little flight around the world. It's really everybody coming together. Was this on the, on the way to Maldives? Yes, it was between Seychelles and Maldives. Uh -huh. yeah. Beautiful place, man. Gorgeous. Yeah, I've been there and I want to go back there. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Did you... Uh, the flight plan was the same that Amelia did a uh, long time ago. So you landed in um, Fortaleza in Brazil? Yes. And then Natal? Mm -hmm. and then crossed the Trinidad? Oh, no, no. Our only stop in Brazil was in Natal. Um, in Natal? Yeah, there was a, so a slight skipped. mistake on our flight plan there. Last minute, um, the first airport got switched from public airport to only dignitaries and military. Ah. And, and that's what we were told. So we switched over to flying into uh, our second airport choice. I don't have the identifier off the top of my head. Um, but we switched over and it really didn't change our flight plan too much. But in terms of Amelia's route, yes, it was very close. We were able to match up 10 of her stops to the original flight. Um, and along the way, we, did, we had to deviate because of overflight permits and uh, political stability through Africa mm -hmm. and also the Middle East. So we stayed out of the Middle East and that's why we bumped our route further to the south, heading through the Maldives. And the reason we avoided India was because it was basically monsoon season. And uh -huh. we didn't want to risk the chance of getting stuck in Mumbai and delaying the trip. Okay. Well, congratulations. As I told you, you are now a citizen of the world <laughs> and uh, you. you are part of the history forever. Thank you. Really, I, we should thank you for doing <laughs> that, you know. Thank, thank you, you so for honor your name and uh, the legacy. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you very much.